By May 1941, his engine was ready to go in Britain's first jet plane, the experimental Gloucester E-28-39. For its maiden flight, the top-secret aircraft was taken to Cranwell, where the jet story had begun. The Power Jets team followed, full of hope. On the same day, a young naval pilot, Eric Brown, was forced to land at Cranwell. Today, he's one of the few surviving witnesses of this historic occasion. When, when I landed, I was a bit astonished to find so many civilians present. And uh, when I went to check in at the mess and asked what was going on, there seemed to be almost an air of conspiracy about the whole place. And um, nobody would give a straight answer to this. We'd been out the day before for tax, some taxing trials. And then on the May the 15th, the weather looked as though it wasn't going to uh, work out. So I went back to uh, Lutterworth. That morning I went to the control tower to check if the weather was good enough for my own flight to Croydon, but it obviously wasn't. And they said, would I mind doing a weather check for them? Anyway, I landed and um, they said, would I be prepared to do a further weather test in the afternoon? And then we got a message to say that the weather was clearing, so I rushed back to Cranwell again. And in the evening, uh, Jerry Sayre did the flight. An aeroplane was rolled out with a shape I... Had, well, not so much the shape, but the construction of which I'd never seen before because it had no propeller. And an extraordinary whining noise came from it and it taxied out to the end of the runway and after a while eventually took off. And I was quite astonished to know what it was because I'd never heard at this stage in my career of a jet aircraft. The various government ministries refused to film this remarkable event. Luckily, an unknown photographer grabbed it in secret. Jerry Sayre was sitting at the end of the runway and a party of us was sitting just to the right. And he held it on the brakes and ran out the engine to full speed, released his brakes, and then he, he hopped off in about 600 yards. Quite an impressive takeoff. Then he held it down level and then climbed. One of my colleagues, Pat Johnson, W.E.P. Johnson, slapped me on the back. He said, Frank, it flies. And in the tension of the moment, I rather rudely said, that was bloody well what it was designed to do, isn't it? Mm.